Welcome back. <laughs> Plenty of people have phobias, so not everyone is getting help for them. That's right. They uh, and. They're going to get help this morning, I think, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Uh, we're joined by Dr. Renee Renardi with Lakeside Center for Behavioral Change. Good morning. Good morning. There are so many phobias, right? There are. There's, I mean, basically you can have a phobia of, of anything. Mm -hmm. So any type of situation, any animal, any object. And really the definition of a phobia is that there's this persistent, irrational fear. So it's something that either there's no danger or very low danger associated with these animals, objects, situations. But yeah, there's there's so many different types of phobias. We'll cover some of the more common ones this morning. Well, I'm gonna give you one I've never heard of, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. I wanna jump right into this Facebook comment because I can't imagine, because yeah. you just said it's gotta be this very like intense fear. Mm -hmm. This one, never heard of before, but I can't imagine trying to live like this. We can bring up this Facebook comment. Um, I have, I think it's a mathophobia, mm -hmm. uh, and it drives me nuts. Anytime I see dust flying around, I get panicky and try to hold my breath in fear of handling dust, even though I know it's flying through the air constantly. Wow, how do you live? There's dust everywhere. Yeah. Right. And a lot of times people know that these thoughts are irrational. They know that they shouldn't be afraid of them, but they don't know what else to do. And as common as phobias are, in adults, only about 20% of the time do phobias go away on their own. So a lot of times people do live um, their entire life uh, with these fears because they don't know how to overcome fear. What happens when we're anxious is we avoid something. So as she, she mentioned, she avoids breathing around um, dust. So we'll talk a little bit today about exposure therapy and how that works to desensitize the nervous system to these feared triggers uh, that they have. So yeah, this is, um, like I said, it, it can be anything. There's one, it talks about mice. Mm -hmm. I am ridiculously scared of mice, and even worse than mice would be rats. Horribly, horribly scared. Nightmares and all. Right. I mean, would this, do, do we develop a phobia when something happens in our lives? Mm -hmm. Like maybe there were mice in the house where that person lived? or Yeah, it's a great question. Phobias uh, develop for a number of different reasons. Sometimes there's a situation that happened, um, either when they were a child or as an adult. At some point in their life, they had this fearful situation happen, which then is like, oh, see? Another thing that happens is that these things can be modeled by family members. So I have a, a very close friend, and her entire family, extended family, is terrified of cats. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's like this family pattern that, that happens. And to the point where it is a phobia. They won't get out of their car if they see a cat crossing the road. Um, so it's something that, yeah, these things, they can be just for that individual. They can be within a family. Um, it can be from a tra traumatic situation that they had or a movie that they watched. So there's lots of different reasons why phobias develop. I think I heard that once too because I don't like spiders. Mm -hmm. I don't know, they're just they're fast and they crawl and mm -hmm. too many legs. But then I realized um, once when I when I was trying to nab a spider when Chase was around that, oh, you know, I shouldn't do that because what if he develops that same phobia? Right, right. So that's a good idea. Kids see us react. A lot of childhood phobias uh, will go away uh, mm -hmm. with some time, um, but uh, sometimes they don't and they persist into adulthood. Or like I said, if it starts in adulthood, it's um, you know, there's an 80% chance that it's going to stick around. So let's use her, her example. She says, okay, I hate spiders. I've got a phobia of them. But then mm -hmm. she, they get around Chase that phobia goes away. Is that still mm -hmm. classified as a phobia or does she just now build a reference going, hey, maybe spiders aren't that bad? Well, on a, every, with any kind of um, experience that we have, any kind of emotion, it occurs on a continuum. So that your arachnophobia is more on the mild side for yeah. you to be able to say, okay, I don't want to show Chase that I'm afraid in this situation, mm -hmm. so I'm going to go over and catch the spider, or I'm going to do whatever. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but if the phobia is severe, it doesn't matter who's around. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah. something that you scream, you jump up on the chair, mm -hmm. you yell for somebody, um, and that's where a phobia is going to be more severe, when you can't control your anxiety response. And that can cause embarrassment, it can cause mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. pretty severe avoidance behaviors as well. Okay, we've got much more on this. We'll get some tips on how to conquer it when we come back. Stay Great. close.